Friends, I'm so glad you're here today and so glad to have you, Brother Mark. I really appreciate you taking the time Thank you. to come and be on the broadcast. Wow. I trust that you that have been watching the broadcast have enjoyed them yes. as much as I have. Yes. It's and uh, I just love the word. I love God. Yep. And I appreciate you as a friend, as a partner in the ministry. Wow. And uh, it's a blessing. Well, we have studied so much together the last uh, few days, and we're studying different programs on uh, the spirit of generosity are on giving and receiving are on what Paul called sowing and reaping. Yeah. And he said, uh, when you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. When you sow generously, you mm -hmm. reap generously. In other words, he says, when you give, there's really two ways you can give. You can give sparing, which is where you always stay in your comfort zone, where right. it don't affect you much. So the Lord told me one time, he said, if your giving don't affect you much, neither will your harvest. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, if you're giving sparingly all the time. So when you give generously is when you step a little bit out of your comfort zone. You stretch a little bit, give more than you were thinking or planning mm -hmm. with the promises of God, mm -hmm. faith in God. Very mm -hmm. interesting because Dad Hagen uh, taught us on faith. But he said when it came to finances, Mm -hmm. He said he pastored for 12 years, but one of the churches he pastored, the Lord make him go pastor it twice. He said, Lord, how come I got to go back there and pastor that church again? <laughs> and he said, the Lord told him, because you did not teach them on tithing and you did not teach them on giving and you robbed them of a blessing yes. because you didn't teach them mm -hmm. tithing That's and right. giving because you are afraid of what they would say about mm -hmm. you. So you have to go pastor it again. So he had to go back and pastor again and then teach on tithing and sowing. In other wow. words, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you never teach the word on this subject of giving and receiving mm -hmm. of the promises of God, people will not have the faith to act or to participate in the process right. of giving and receiving, sowing right. and reaping with your faith in God. So he said he went back to that church to teach. He said, and one day a farmer came up to him and told him, he said, uh, Pastor, he said, I have been tithing all my life. And he said, if anything supernatural has ever happened to me financially, I don't know it. He said, I'm doing good. My business, my farm's doing good, but nothing supernatural has ever happened to me financially. Mm -hmm. So Dad Hagen said, well, maybe you were just tithing out of duty. Maybe right. you're just hey, tithing, you know, out of need. He said, here's what you do. The next time you tithe or when you give, take the promises of God, the word of God, meditate on that, declare mm -hmm. that, and expect a harvest. Right. He said the farmer came back a few weeks later with the biggest grin on his face <laughs> and said, for the first time in my life, something supernatural Amen. happened to me financially. Amen. Friend, I'm telling you, something supernatural can happen to you financially when you decide, I'm going to be a tither, I'm going to be a giver. But when you take your faith in God and in the Word of God, meditate on the Scriptures and speak mm -hmm. or say what God's right. Word says about it. Don't talk lack. Don't whine about the prices of stuff. Don't whine about the lack of money. Yes. But say with Amen. your mouth, my Amen. God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Say Amen. with your mouth, God will make all grace abound towards me and my family and my business. He makes all grace abound. So I have Amen. all sufficiency in all things. Dad Hagen would say, say with your mouth, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I do not lack for ability. I do not lack for opportunity. Amen. And I never lack for money. Amen. Amen. He said, say the last one twice. I never lack for money. Say it again. And I then he said, because I'm money. a tither, <laughs> I'm a giver, I'm redeemed from the curse, I'm Yay. washed in the blood of Jesus, I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out, I'm the head and not the Amen. tail, I can give more than I've ever given and still have more than I've ever had. In other words, supernatural increase will happen for those who are tithers, Amen. givers, sowers, Paul said you can expect something supernatural is going to happen to you financially. Amen. Amen. You know, I wrote a book on it, uh, Releasing Supernatural Increase oh, in Your Life, good. Provision. Yeah. It's a great book. 
and it's very practical. And I'm telling you, it works. The word works. It works. I've got another story like that. My pastor, Pastor Kenny, you remember him, him from yeah. Lamar, Colorado. Yeah. He was an overseer of 10 churches when uh, part of the time that I attended his church in Lamar, Colorado. But there was another pastor in that area that he oversaw, huh. and that pastor was a tither, but he said, hey, I'm having a hard time paying my bills. Wow. And Pastor Kenny asked him, this pastor's name was Pastor Marty, he said, well, what attitude are you giving that with? Yeah. Are you giving that as a debt that you owe? And he said, yes. Hmm. My, my Pastor Kenny told Pastor Marty, now I want you to change the attitude huh. in which you give it. And I want you to give that hmm. as a seed that you owe, a seed that you so, sow and expect a harvest. Expect the word to work. And so the next month, this other pastor called him. He said, you, you can't believe what's happened in my finances yeah. and how they've turned around. Wow. And, and he said, have you done anything different? Have you given any more? Wow. No, I just changed the attitude wow. in which I give it. So we, we don't just teach on it so people give more. We teach right. on it so you'll receive more. Right. In other words, faith comes by hearing and hearing. And sometimes you say, well, people already know those scriptures. Well, they already know the scriptures on healing too, but you still teach on healing, don't you? Right. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing. So when you teach on salvation or victory or healing, when you teach the word, when you teach the word, when it comes to money and finances and the blessing of the Lord, then faith cometh. When right. faith cometh, then you know Something supernatural is going to happen. In other words, it's not my natural ability. My faith is in God. Right. God's ability is unlimited. Right. His goodness, somebody said it this way. They said there's no limit to God's giving except his creature's capacity to receive. Amen. Aha. Uh -huh. In other words, no limit to God's giving. Amen. You never have to talk God into giving because that's what he is. Well, God's so There's no limit to his giving. Except Hallelujah. our receiving. He's given us the best. Yeah. He gave us the best, his only begotten son. Yes. Amen. And he sowed him as a seed. Yeah. Jesus Amen. talked about that in John chapter 12. Yeah. That he, and so God sowed the greatest seed in yeah. the history of, you know, humanity. Wow. He sowed Amazing. Jesus. Yes. And Jesus came to earth and he said when he talked about that, he was talking about the death that he should die. Yeah. But ultimately, God has received mm -hmm. the greatest harvest yeah. because he sowed Many the greatest sons. seed. Yeah, his and, and you know what? I actually believe that we live under an open heaven yes. because of what Jesus Amen. has already done. Amen. And, you know, Mark... Uh, Malachi yeah. chapter three, verse 10 says, prove me now prove here with, me. with your giving and see if I will not open the windows wow. of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Amazing. That's yeah. so large that you prove, don't have. Prove me now. In other words, this is one area that God says, Put I double dog dare you, what we used to say, yeah. to prove me and see when you're a tither, you're a giver, and see if I will not open up some supernatural blessing that would not have happened unless right. you acted on the word as a tither, as a giver, from Hebrews 7 to Matthew 23 to Malachi. He said, prove me now. And I told the Lord years ago when I was just a teenager, I'm going to be a double tither, 20% giver. It's mm -hmm. not required, mm -hmm. just the tithe and the offering. And I said, well, I'm going to systematically do 20%. So I started doing that when I was just a teenager. So if I had $100, then I'd say my first 20 goes to the Lord. Wow. And so I gave 20%. Then when I first got married with my wife, Trina, wow, I said, Trina, you know, I really want to be a 30% giver, but I just don't see how I can afford it. I just don't see. And so I said, I'm doing 20 you know, I said, but I really want to do 30. So we'd only been married about a year and we were pastoring a little church made about $150 a week, 150 a week. And we got, <laughs> you know, babies and kids, you know. And, and so I said, the Lord said, when would you like to start doing 30%? I said, Lord, that's not a good time. I mean, I got this, I got my kids. I said, I said I, you know, it's not a good time. And Malachi jumped out, prove me now. I said, you mean like now? He said, now. So I went from 20% to 30%, which was about $50 a week out yeah. of 150. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that 30% of 50, and then I started giving 100, 200 a week, 300, 500, $1,000 a week, mm -hmm. 2,000 a week, $3,000 a week, $5,000 a week, $10,000 a week. What's happening? 
I'm just given a percentage mm-hmm. of 30% and God keeps increasing me. So I'm able to give more than I've ever given, but I'm right. still receiving more than I've ever My received. Goodness. In That's other amazing. words, I would rather have 10% of a hundred million dollars than 90% of 50,000. Yeah. Are y'all still here? In other words, Amen. when you're a giver, <laughs> you're just saying God's going to open up the supernatural. And Amen. so when you're a giver, you can give 10%. You know, that's a good starting point. But what would happen mm-hmm. if you gave 15% or 20%? What would happen? Do you believe God could bring increase? Amen. Do you believe he could increase your yeah. business, your job, your church? This is not just for church people. This is for pastors. It works for It's for pastors. Everywhere. God gives seed to the sower. He don't give seed to the singer. He don't give seed to the preacher. He gives seed to the sower. So when Amen. you're a sower, God sees that and brings supernatural increase. Amen. And you know what? He's no respecter of persons. Prove me now. <laughs> yeah, he's no respecter wow. of persons. This yeah. will work for a farmer. Yeah. This will work for, for an preacher. educator. <laughs> this will work for a preacher. Yeah. This will work for an attorney. Yeah. This will work if you're for a doctor. Generous giver, yeah. This 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 will work for yeah. anybody anywhere. See, yeah. faith works yes. for anybody anywhere. And the same, yes. And it, it's always the same. Wow. And did you know what? I've proven God before I went in the ministry. I've yeah. proven God since I went in the ministry. I've proven God personally. Prove me I've, now. Proven yeah. God in my wow. business. I've proven God with the ministry. Yeah. And you know what? God just keeps increasing and, and he God keeps helping us go forward. Is faithful. Yes. Amen. One translation where it says, Have faith in God, Mark eleven twenty two, it says, Lay hold on God's faithfulness. So Amen. when you prove God in tithing and giving, you'll see his faithfulness. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? We're going to come back after a short break and we're going to continue sharing on this. I've got some great examples, I believe, that will encourage you in this realm. And if you need prayer, you feel free to call us during the break. Bless Amen. Us. Friends, I am so glad that you are watching today. We've been talking about the spirit of generosity. I have my good friend Mark Hankins with me who has a tremendous revelation in the area of finances. And for any new partner that gives any partnership of any amount in the United States of America, we'll send this book to you, God's Extravagant Generosity Free of Charge. At the foundation of all my teaching, I believe that God is good and the devil is evil. It's the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life, and that life more abundantly, that life extremely excessive, abundant. You know what Jesus wants to give you? Extremely excessive, abundant, good life. Friends, I'm so glad that you stayed with us. I told you I'd give you some other examples, and I want to use a couple of them. Yes. The man that started the Caterpillar Corporation. Yes, R.G. Letourneau. Yes, he developed a gear, but God showed it to him. And he started out, Mark. Oh, R.G. Letourneau actually had the company that was Caterpillar's competition. And right. he built the largest earth-moving machines. But he was not just a tither. He was a giver. Now, right. I know R.G. Letourneau's testimony. So, I mean... Tell us about it. All right. Well, R.G. Letourneau, it's a great story because he has Letourneau College in East Texas. Mm -hmm. So R.G. Letourneau, great story. He's a book about his life. He was a born-again Christian, Mm -hmm. but his business was not doing well. And he told the Lord, well, Lord, you know, if you'll just give me a certain amount of money, then I'll give you some. The Lord said, no, 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 don't work that way. You, You give up front. You tithe and give up front. And then, so he said, okay, Lord. He said, I'm going under... He said, but if you will bless me, R.G. Letourneau said the Lord, if you will bless me, this is wild. He said, I'll actually give you 90% and live on 10%. Right. So the Lord gave him the idea of the earth moving machines. And during World War II, those machines actually built the landing strips for our soldiers, you know, the Air Force, and the his earth move machines built the interstate system across the United States. So R.G. Letourneau got so blessed with the ideas God gave him on right. how to build this earth move machine that he gave 90% and lived on 10%. So that's yeah. when I say I'd rather have 10% of 100 million than 90% of 50,000. Yeah. In other words, God will increase you if you just right. say, Lord, 
I'm not just going to be stuck at 10%. I'd like to do tithes and offerings. I'd like yeah. to go to maybe 15, 20%, maybe more and just right. give and prove me and see what God will do. So right. I was thinking of RG Letourneau, how that his competition was Caterpillar, but he was a born again Christian, Amen. not just a tither. He was a giver and wow. He was so blessed. I mean, he built universities, college. He's just yeah, so Christian blessed. universities, yes. and um, and then there was another man. He was yep. by the name of Kraus. All right, you know another. One. I've and heard that uh, one. Yeah. when I was a child, I started driving tractor when I was thirteen years old. And I was a little bitty old shrimpy kid, but my granddad had a half section. It's a half a mile wide and a mile long. Wow. And we had a, a John Deere thirty twenty tractor, no cab. Wow. Right. 80 horsepower, and we had a 15-foot Krauss one way. Wow. So it changed the way American farm, but wow. he was about to go broke. Wow. And he went to church, a spirit-filled church, and he gave his last $20 in the offering. Wow. And that night, God gave him a vision of this one-way plow. It's a disc, and it runs at an angle, uh -huh. and it, it moves the dirt over, and uh -huh. it'll, it'll kill the weeds. Mm. And it changed the way America farmed. Wow. And he became a very, very wealthy man. Wow. When he when he was willing to give his last twenty dollars. That's amazing God. grace. And you know, another example, Barbara and I. You know, you were talking how you you know, I've done the math and it's not exact, but Barbara and I have given about thirty percent wow. of our income over the years. And we didn't always make a lot of money. But our net worth is over three times wow. what we've ever made. And wow. we now give <coughs> in one week yeah. about one and a half times. More than we used to make a year. <laughs> more than I make in a year. That's exactly true. the truth. It's true. Now, look, <laughs> I had this financial advisor, you know, come to me. And he's a brilliant guy. And he was looking at my money and my taxes and, <laughs> and my giving. And so he was in my <laughs> office. And so this guy, he says, he looked at me and he says, you give way too much. And I said, well, that's why I have too much. <laughs> he said, <"That's laughs> yeah. Figure that with your pencil. And I, in other words, and then he said, a certain ministry, a, a Kenneth Hagin ministry has been a blessing, taught us faith. And so, of course, we give to our church, we give to ministries, but Dad Hagin had taught us faith. So we always gave him a special offering every month. And we got to where that got bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And so he said, you give him too much money. He said, he's already got more money than you do. And I said, well, I want to keep it that way. I said, because he's the one that Hallelujah. taught us faith. He Amen. taught us our redemption in Christ. He taught us on the authority of the believer. Amen. If we hadn't heard the word, we wouldn't have anything. Amen. So don't tell me I give too much. So I'm going to tell you this. Never listen to a financial advisor that tells you give too much. <laughs> in other words, your giving has actually changed your living and yes. brought increase. He or whoever your financial advisor is may not understand that you don't just give 10%. You may want to give 20%. Or you may want to give 30%. My dad actually gave 50% systematically. But the blessing is more than financial. Amen. God will make all grace and favor and do things for you money could never do for you. Oh, Mark. When you're a giver. You've I, seen that. I have three sons. Wow. They're all married. They're all healthy. The blessing. They all have good, healthy children. Wow. They're all generous. Wow. They're all supernaturally blessed. Yes. And you know what? I didn't give it to them. No, the blessing of the Lord. God, I taught them some principles from the Word, right? <laughs> yeah. About giving and investing. Yeah. And working. And yeah, keeping and a working. good attitude. And being a giver. And they're all givers. They're, all, they're all givers. They're good workers. They're all good workers. They all got a good attitude. And yeah. they're all supernaturally blessed. And, and what's amazing to me... If I didn't give it to them, God gave it to them, right? Yeah, the Lord blessed But them. these principles that they have working in their life, are, it's just, and, and God's promoted wow. them, blessed them, helped them. Wow. It's just literally amazing. It They've is. all got good wives. Look, the I'm blessing so of the Lord, Proverbs 10, 22. Yeah. The blessing of the Lord. In other words, do you believe in yes. the blessing of the Lord? because of what Christ has done, because of the blood of Jesus, when you see God's generosity, then it makes you want to be generous. If you've got the life of Christ right. in you, he laid down his life. Surely you can be a tither. Surely well, you can give generously if he gave his life. So it makes you want to be a giver. In other words, nobody wants that on their tombstone. Here lies stingy. In other words... <laughs> 
<laughs> Here lies Stingy. He didn't give nothing. He's Mr. Frugal. Well, frugal may be good when it comes to Walmart, but frugal <laughs> is not good when it comes to the kingdom of God. In the Amen. kingdom of God, he loves generosity. So Amen. in other words, you are a giver. You just say, I'm a tither. I want to give the first 10% of all my increase, but I also would like to do more than that. Right. I'd like to do maybe another offering or another 10%. My daddy always my daddy always said, you can tithe <laughs> on what you make or tithe on what you want to make. Amen. But when I left home and went to college, my dad said, there is a God and I'm not him. Yeah, you know what that meant? Words. He was not going to send me no money. In other words, <laughs> you better learn to have faith in God because my natural daddy was limited, but my heavenly father was unlimited. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and it's so much better to put your confidence, put your trust yeah. in God. Yeah. In fact, you know, we just taught a series on this. And Jeremiah yeah. actually says, cursed is the man wow. who trusts in man and makes flesh yes, on yes. He's going to be like a, like, a, like a weed in the desert. He's yeah. going to, like a tumbleweed, he's going to blow yeah. away. But blessed is the man yeah. who trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. Yeah. And he said, he's going to be like a tree that's planted wow. by the rivers. He brings fruit, his fruit in season. season. Yeah. He never ceases yielding Just, fruit. And he's meditating on the word. And his leaf yeah. shall always be green. Wow. That's a Psalms 1, 1 through 3, that first chapter. Right. We you could go to a, a bunch of financial seminars. One of the best financial seminars you can go to is read the Psalms. Read Paul's revelation. Amen. Read that Christ has redeemed you. Exercise your faith. And Amen. thank God if you learn about money different ways, but always put God first, the gospel first, the, the ministry first, the church, the blessing of the Lord. It'll Amen. make you rich. Amen. Rich means abundantly provided for. That doesn't mean everybody's going to drive a Rolls Royce. I mean, you may not want to drive a Rolls Royce through McDonald's. Listen, so it doesn't mean everybody's going to have a Rolls Royce, but you can be blessed in your transportation, your house, your business, bless yeah. more. In other words, you can give more than you've ever given and still have more than you ever had. Yeah. In other words, the blessing of the Lord right. makes you rich, abundantly provided for, and adds no what? Sorrow with it. In other words, you realize God is your source. Christ has redeemed you with his blood. Now act on the word of God and watch that blessing multiply. Amen. You know, when when you sow seed in the kingdom of God, and like I believe in all, like I believe in tithe, offerings, alms, yeah. right? Sowing and, and, yeah. and sowing. Yeah. But I believe the greatest aspect is sowing. Yeah. And I, I like to do all my giving with the mentality of yeah. a sower. Wow. Because when I sow it as a seed, that never leaves my life. Yeah. It goes into my future. Yeah. And and it produces a harvest. Wow. Sure. In fact, I had a prophet, Bobby Jean Merck. You may have known her. I knew her, yeah. But Bobby Jean Merck gave me a word a few years ago before she went home to be with the Lord. And she actually gave me a word in Kit Carson when I hardly had anything. I remember. And she sent it on a card and she said, increase. It was with a praying man. You've seen that picture? Yeah. Increase will be a key word in your life. Wow. And it truly has. And I had some people that got mad at me. Sure. When I went out in the country to visit, and they said, and this is, Mark, when it, it was, we were stretching it, made every nickel, yeah. wondering where it's going to come from. But they said, it must be nice to be a rich preacher. I told Bobby Jean, and she said, Lawson, it's not what you have. It's the anointing that's on you. Wow. But she gave me a word before she died, and she said, Lawson, God is going to take the things that were stolen from you yeah. early in your life, sure. and he's going to multiply them, yeah. and he's going to give them back to you in the end of your life. Yeah. And literally, I see God doing that. You've seen that. the Lord do I it. see that coming to pass. He and will multiply. He, he took the things. I was taken out of a will, uh -huh. right? A lot that it involved a lot of money Wow. because I chose to be a minister of the gospel. Wow rather than to take over my granddad's farm and ranch yeah. and his lot, his Arabian horse business wow. and certain things. But she said, he's going to take the things that oh. were stolen from you early in your life and he's going to multiply them. Wow. He's going to multiply them first. God is faithful. And he's going to give them back in the end of wow. your life. And I'm literally seeing that happen today. Wow. God is faithful. Praise God. And so God is so good. Wow. You know, when we keep our trust, and he's so faithful. Wow. In fact, I'm going to be sharing in a conference that we have coming up on yeah. the faithfulness yes. of God. He is so faithful. Wow. 
And you know what? He is so good to us. He makes all grace. Praise the Lord. God is able to make all grace abound. This is our last day to be uh, offering this, but if you want to become a partner, we're going to mail this to you. If you're in the United States of America, we have mailing restrictions mm. outside of the United States of America. But if you partner with this at any amount or give a gift of any amount today, we're going to offer this book to you absolutely free of charge. We'll mail it to you free of charge. God's Extravagant Generosity by Mark Hankins. So wow. if you need prayer, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Blessings. We'd like to invite you to join us as we share this message of grace, faith, and righteousness with countless others by becoming a regular monthly partner with Grace for Today. When you become a new partner, we'd like to send you a copy of Mark Hankins' book entitled How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity Free of Charge. To become a monthly partner, go to our website, charischristiancenter.com. Praise the Lord, friends. I want to invite you to church this coming Sunday morning. Whether you're in Colorado Springs or whether you're wherever you're at, if you're in Colorado Springs, you can see us Sunday morning at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. live, but you can also watch us with our live stream congregation at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m., or you can go to our website and get it anytime at charischristiancenter.com.